Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Samina, the session's moderator, presenting from Lucknow. How is the weather in your city? For us, the heat of election season is giving tough competition to the cold wave. No one is immune to election mania in this country, and that's why this time we have a very eminent guest with us at Sirali. You will know very soon. Sirali is a book club hosted by Shri Parthasarthi Sen Sharma ji and supported by Mohit Gupta ji from City Book Leaders and I, Samina. The trio got together and with an aim to build community of people from all walks of life with a common interest, books and reading. We invite eminent guests and discuss myriad of topics that fall under the purview of Sirali. Say secular, ra rational, and li liberal. Sirali also means a pleasant evening in Italian. So our topics have ranged from Shame Awad, books written by bureaucrats, to Bega Mahtar, Sahir Ludhianvi, to mythological tales by Sudha Murti ji. Our host, Partha Sarthi Sen Sharma ji, is a 1994 batch IS officer from UP Kader and is currently serving as additional secretary with the Ministry of Culture in Government of India. He has previously served on several crucial positions, including secretary to the chief minister in UP. However, the identity he really cherishes is that of an author. He's a renowned author with seven books to his credit, two travelogues, two novels, and three Hindi translations. A new book, a Travi novel on Andaman Nicobar is in pipeline and will be available this year very soon. Uh, so without further ado, I pass on the mic to our host, Partha Sarkiji, to take the session forward. Thank you, Samina, for your kind words. Thank you, friends, for joining in from all parts of India and also abroad. I can see many of my friends on screen. But first of all, uh, let me welcome and thank Mr. Dr. Qureshi for joining in this conversation, sir, for having accepted our invitation. Uh, friends, it is a pleasure for me to introduce uh, Dr. Qureshi. Dr. Qureshi is a 1971 batch IS officer from Haryana Kader. Uh, after doing a lot of a lot many stints in different positions, he uh, his last stint was I think Secretary of Sports and Youth Welfare, sir. And then he was in election commissioner, and then the chief election commissioner. It is in this capacity as his election commissioner and chief election commissioners that we are primarily interested in today's episode. And after that, he has written three books. The two books that I have got to read in the last few days was The Undocumented Wonder, The Story of Indian Elections, and the edited book. He will discuss uh, The Great Martian. He has, been, has had important stints as an international observer in many elections in different parts of the world. For nine years, he was a member of the Board of Advisors of the International Institute of Democracy and Electoral um, Assistance in Stockholm. And in that... Uh, Stint also, he was nominated as a global ambassador for democracy along with Dr. Kofi Annan. I welcome, sir, once again, and thank you for uh, accepting our invitation. Thank you. Uh, friends, many of us are, have joined for many episodes. This episode is dedicated to Dr. Qureshi's two books on elections and democracy. And we would also invite you to put your questions in our chat box. And time permitting, we will invite some of you also or to ask Dr. Qureshi questions or take your questions uh, offline. Dr. Qureshi, the first thing that I want to uh, talk about is your first book. The first book doc, is an undocumented wonder, The Making of the Great Indian Elections. Uh, that I think came out in 2014, yes. And then the revised version has come out in 2019. I have had the pleasure of reading this book uh, and we have the common publisher in this. My books are all published from Rupa Publishers and your book I saw was from the same publisher. So uh, many chief election commissioners came before you. You were the 17th chief election commissioner. But uh, not many people wrote about this great, uh, huge wonder that Indian elections are. It is by far the largest election exercise anywhere in the world. And uh, so my first question is that what prompted you to write this book and why did you choose the title, The Undocumented Wonder, as the title of this book? There is a small story associated with the title. So I would like you to share that story also with the audience. Thank you. Yeah. You know, when I joined the Election Commission, I tried to uh, find books uh, which had been written on the election so that I can learn from their experiences. 
I could only uh, see one book by Mr. T. N. Session. Actually, he wrote two, and uh, one by Lingdo on uh, focused only on Kashmir elections of 2002. And uh, I, when I was in the Election Commission uh, during that period, uh, Mr. Um, uh, uh, Krishna Murthy also published a book. So these are three books uh, which are in my knowledge. I don't think any other C. E. C. has written. So the lack of uh, information and knowledge on the subject. Was uh, the immediate provocation because we there there are so many things that we do that we need to document them, and your second question actually also answers the your first question in the sense that you know there was a, a journalist friend of mine, uh, Rohit Bansal, uh, very bright man and uh, as a journalist always critical of uh, the bureaucracy and what we do and uh, one of his remarks then. Uh, Uh, provoked me to ask him uh, how much does he know about the election? He knew hardly anything. So I said, uh, you know, um, brother, you need to understand. Uh, why don't you indicate to me a place which is convenient to you, and I'll ask the collector to make arrangements for you to see what goes on behind this whole uh, big exercise. He lives in Noida, and immediately I uh, rang up uh, the collector of Noida. to uh, arrange this visit and when he came back he wrote an article in one j- journal which i have quoted verbatim for it's a three page article which was beautifully written actually it sums up my book and he says the the india the election process is very little known about it we all know about who are the politicians who are fighting who will be the chief minister who will win who will lose that is the entire debate in politics but and during this election now these days uh, um, uh, all that you see in the newspapers is uh, who has signed the paper then who uh, withdrew and who is supporting so the uh, the general election you know 12 million people conducted the election for us all bureaucrats all so called babus whom uh, people contemptuously dismiss now the same uh, the, the bureaucracy Shows this professionalism when it comes under election commission and delivers a perfect election year after year. And when he commented uh, on what he saw, he came back a convert. And then he says, "Yeah, I have come to the conclusion." In fact, he says, "I wish what was going on there could be live telecast, so that people could see whether what professionalism and what effort is going behind it." And then he says, "Yeah, his conclusion was that the election commission." is the the most self effacing organization and india's election an undocumented wonder so that is the time when i decided to document this wonder and then with his permission i also gave the t- title to my book an undocumented wonder the making of the great indian election so i have personally read this book and uh, it is extremely comprehensive it fast covers almost all facets of the elections for the uh, audience that has joined it covers almost all facets of the election elections the money in elections the media in elections election management the nuts and bolts so if one at one place one wants to get a comprehensive picture in a very lucid language of what indian elections are which is not any election it is the world's largest by far largest election then this is the book to pick up if you want wants to understand the election management part of the elections as well as some of the issues associated with it so uh, i myself have been associated with elections i have Worked as an observer for thirteen times, and I have interacted. At that time, I met you as a election commissioner and chief election commissioner. I have also worked as DEO, RO. So I have covered almost eighteen elections in my own lifetime. I have seen how elections have changed from the time when I joined the service. But still, when I read your book, I came out with about many, many new uh, aspects that I had no clue about. So I would like you to recount some interesting anecdote. that people may not know about the indian elections um, that you have quoted in your book in fact you know the first thing people did not know uh, even i did not know till 2 years into my in the, in the service in the election commission the magnitude of uh, india's election i knew it is uh, one uh, and the common expression was the one of the largest democracy is one of the largest election then uh, there i watched a movie the on the election where produced by the ministry of external affairs for our foreign audiences and when i the, had a look at that movie 
they, they it was describing the size of the Indian Election Commission in the, the world like, you know, it is so big. I imagine Italy, France, Germany, and the, they named four countries. So obviously people are impressed by hearing these four big countries' names. Then, but I got curious, and uh, when I looked at the atlas, the population, I found India's election was bigger than all 50 countries of Europe put together. Now, this magnitude itself uh, struck me. And if it, imagine if it took me two years in the election commission to uh, uh, get this uh, fact, how, uh, how many people, how little people know about it. So, the, then uh, I went on to compare it with other uh, the countries also, other continents. So there are 50, I didn't even know how many countries every continent has, but I learned it because of this exercise. There are 54 countries in Africa. And again, uh, India is uh, more than, a, they're all about 50-60% of India. Uh, so North and South America together I have 43 countries. Although on the map it looks like there are only 10 countries, but there are 43 countries, big and small. Now, to two continents and uh, there are less than half of India. So actually it turned out that we are 90 countries rolled into one. Now that is in terms of numbers and the size, but in terms of complexities, that was the other issue Then uh, I went into, that it is not just the numbers, that 90 countries numbers get added, but the complexities and, uh, and the problems of 90 countries are also rolled into one. Anything which is happening in around the world, uh, is, uh, you have the problem in India also. Um, uh, terrorism, uh, militancy, tribal warfare, uh, uh, social disharmony, in, uh, racism, whatever. Something or the other is happening in India in some part of the, or the other. So, secondly, uh, what struck me was that this is not only the biggest election in the world. You are an officer, uh, IS officer, you have uh, managed districts and uh, big organizations. This is the biggest management event of any kind in the world. So imagine, you know, about uh, now uh, 90 crore people uh, for this, uh, for a general election, which will come uh, two years later, about a billion people will have to be accessed, you know, their uh, and electoral rolls updated, their photos captured if they are missing, their, their photo identity card issued and to get them to vote uh, 1 million polling stations to be set up and uh, the and to ensure the uh, inclusivity of everyone uh, we have the uh, the facility of braille on every the evm and there are 2 million of them on uh, for the facility of the physically disabled in 1 million polling stations we provide a ramp just for one day so uh, and uh, unlike any management, any, any administration, which can uh, brook some error, except, of course, uh, sending uh, uh, rockets in space where the zero error is the permission. Here in election also, we don't uh, expect any error whatsoever. And for us, 99.9% uh, good election is no good election. It has to be 100%. Because even in one booth, if there is a you know mismanagement, booth capturing or something, we have to order a repoll because the purity of the uh, election has to be ensured. So the, these complexities they, they come out, and I've tried to capture this. And uh, one thing which you would have noticed that is this, and this book is entirely conversational. When I was discussing it with my publisher, uh, I was describing some activities and. Uh, uh, she uh, she said, okay, all that you are telling me, please just write in the book in the same language that you have told me. So it is, uh, you will notice, you know, there are incidents, uh, the people behind it, you know, the, the collectors uh, who did some good work, some innovation somewhere, the, the subdivisional magistrate, uh, other junior officers, presiding officers. They, it is a story of those uh, 18 million people who can, uh, who are involved in the making of the great Indian election. Uh, there are a number of people today who has joined who are not uh, in the business of managing elections, who are, but who are voters. Many of them have questions and criticisms about Indian elections also and have ideas. Many of the ideas have been floating around for some time. The interesting part of this book is that Dr. Qureshi has not shied away from those uh, concerns and ideas and suggestions 
and each of these ideas like public funding for elections like proportional representation system vis-a-vis the first part parts the post system all of them has been tackled the right to recall for example or the con- the concept of nota all these ideas which many voters have the practical possibilities of them what are what is the stage this all also have been uh, tackled in this book which makes it more interesting than a simple management book of how elections are managed so uh, the two areas that i remember when you were cc that you had especially focused on was one was voter education and voter inclusion i if i am not wrong the sweep division of election commission came up during that time and the other was your efforts to uh, monitor expenditure of elections i think that was also something that was given a lot of emphasis during that time now after almost a decade sir how much do you really think has has been the effect of these two real areas that you used put in your effort how successful mm. how successful have been these efforts yeah partha when i took over the cc in my inaugural press conference i gave myself two challenges one was urban apathy voter apathy and uh, second was uh, money power and uh, of course there were all other uh, management issues but these were my focus area immediately the i set up uh, two new divisions uh, with the joint secretary level officer one was voter education division the other was uh, uh, expenditure monitoring division i got a, an officer from the ministry of information and broadcasting uh, akshay rao uh, to head this uh, voter education and uh, uh pk das from the central board of direct taxes and income tax person uh, although at that time the cabinet secretary advised that i have an audit and account officer so i said no no there is no question of audit and account because the audit and account officer only audit the government account whereas here we are going to audit the accounts of the candidates which is all private activity so income tax is the person so um, and in fact they, how i chose these people also is interesting for is there uh, about 12 people uh, applied uh, by word of mouth for expenditure monitoring division i said i'll interview each one of them the very first person who met me was pk das and i thought he was the guy number one he had the field experience and he was the experience of uh, cvdt at the uh, red quarter and he was a low profile man which was very important because we had seen how one secretary out of 12 secretaries kj rao um, uh, was made in uh, by the media into uh, uh, chief election commissioner so um, so uh, uh, election commission's face is only the cec you have noted that the other two cec is uh, all just keep quiet they wait for their turn to be, uh, become the face so we didn't want that uh, any officer should uh, uh, start getting media attention and then politicians will start making a bee line will put pressure on him so this was the right guy and then i we abandoned uh, all other interviews the first man who came to us was pikidas and we selected him and he did a brilliant job in fact in my book i have listed 40 modus operandi of uh, abuse of money power in fact when i was writing the book you are a writer so you you know you we spend a lot of time giving a title to everything so one title which initially came to my mind uh, 40 ways of cheating then i thought people will say hey, here is a chief election commissioner who is teaching us cheating so i said how to stop cheating 40 ways to stop cheating so 40 modus operandi of uh, cheating and abuse of money power that we had discovered till then they are listed here now on the other thing in voter educate uh, voter apathy we had a tremendous success they, we actually uh, since uh, my phd was in communication and uh, in civil service also i had uh, our direct public relations uh, of haryana in, uh, in very early on so i import- understood the importance of communicating with people so uh, i mentioned in the commission that we should set up a, we should do something for voter education and i was uh, some really dismissed by the my seniors then they said, no 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 do it in your time uh, because uh, there was this debate that uh, educating voters is not our job our job is just to conduct election and i disagreed i said there's no question of we uh, being indifferent to it because if only the, the turnout is low 20% people come out and vote 
and the vote is divided over 15 candidates, the winner gets only 10%. So 90% have not voted for him. So he, is he a real representative of the constituency? No. So since it raises the question of legitimacy, uh, it becomes our concern and I insisted that. But since uh, I was uh, asked to wait for my turn, so I waited for my turn for four years. As soon as I got the opportunity, I set it up. The first election was Bihar 2010. Highest ever turnout in history. More women voters came out to vote than men, although their absolute numbers are less. And we have not looked back. Every election after that in the last 20 years has given us higher and higher and higher turnout uh, without fail. And uh, uh, that also took care, uh, interestingly, of a criticism we used to face that uh, because of the enforcement of modern code of conduct, we were accused of um, killing the festival of democracy and replacing it with the silence of the graveyard. Media used to tell us that, uh, politicians used to tell us that. Interestingly, one uh, very senior uh, media person, a very charming lady uh, of television I would not name, she wrote an article criticizing our enforcement of the model board and making election peaceful. Yeah, and she uh, talked uh, that she was missing the fest uh, festival. I said, Madam, I wrote a counter article in the Sun Times. I said, Madam, if you're missing the festival of democracy, please send me your address. I'll send the festival to your home, I promise. People will come and paint your walls red, blue, and uh, uh, yellow. They will, they will be 24 by 7 loudspeakers, uh, noise and chaos. If that is what you're missing, so I will send it to you. Whereas the, uh, the biggest um, uh, uh, proof of a uh, festival is people participation. The fact that, that people started coming in larger numbers because we made election peaceful and quiet. So actually that was the festivity uh, which we re revived. So our voter education has been a tremendous success. It has uh, led to veritable um, um, uh, uh, participation revolution. Now, on the other front, we had initially tremendous success. We started seizing money, drugs, alcohol, left, right, and center, th hundreds of crores and thousands of crores have been seized so far. But then uh, crime is always ahead. Now the money reaches the destination before election commission comes into play. So when money is not physically moving, what will we catch? You know, it has already reached the uh, uh, money lender of uh, every village. So... Uh, Thereafter, initial success, I must con confess, and I'm pained to uh, make this confession, that um, uh, we have not achieved the success we were looking for. Fair enough, sir. A very candid confession. I would agree exactly the same. I have seen the elections for quite some time now. The voter education and voter participation has really tremendously increased in the last decade or so. Um, to some measure, sir, I would you would probably agree is the credit also goes to uh, one officer in the election commission, Mr. Umesh Sina, who has been uh, in the forefront of this. Uh, but also, uh, sir, I totally agree with what you said about the limited impact on curbing the expenditure um, power or the money power in elections or the uh, limited success of the expenditure monitoring. Exactly the same reason, sir. I went to Tamil Nadu the last elections. By, by the time you reach, the things have already are in place, you know, the, so to speak. So uh, many of our friends who have joined today are also ICE officers. They are conducting at present also elections in UP. But uh, I would like, uh, Samina, if there's somebody who is from outside the government to ask a question, because that always gives a different perspective. And I'm always very open to those kind of questions also. Yes, so we have uh, Jain Krishna ji um, who has a question. Jain ji, um, again, I mean, he has served as uh, CEO of NSDC and Tat MD of Tata. So I would invite him. Uh, yeah, Mr. Qureshi, you know, my my first question is, you know, as you know, we are uh, just, uh, you know, 75th uh, birth, uh, birthday of independence is round, round the corner. But, you know, elections are, def despite all reforms, elections in India are still fought based on religion, caste, sub-caste, and so on and so forth. Whereas issues like governance and many more important development issues take a backseat. 
do we do do, do you see this change in in, in foreseeable future uh, at least in our lifetime you know the i'm again very pain to notice that uh, not only it has been changed it has changed for the worse as uh, some 60 70 years ago we did not know our caste now we know our caste and sub 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 caste gotra everything is be now being uh, reminded uh, so there are two things uh, two adverse effects of uh, election uh, which is a paradox one is uh, communalism and casteism which has uh, increased the other is money power so corruption so corrupt election themselves have become the biggest uh, source of corruption because they, they uh, spend crores of rupees uh, beyond the permitted limit of 70 lakhs for uh, the lok sabha uh, about 10 crore 20 crore we know it anecdotally but uh, to catch them we need evidence and uh, but evidence is not forthcoming so uh, uh, the fact that money power is uh, and if you spend crores you need crores uh, to fight election so uh, as soon as after to spending 20 30 crores an mp becomes a minister he would call his uh, secretary and then uh, as bureaucracy that i need to repay my debt so uh, please start collecting you know what we are hearing in uh, um, uh, uh, maharashtra the home minister how 100 crores you know the it was the target given to uh, the the police commissioner so the, the the kind of thing when bureaucracy and politician join hand so that these two adverse effects have actually marred the beauty of uh, the electoral democracy uh, and uh, communalism is uh, has increased 100 times casteism has increased and uh, corruption is increased uh, i can see uh, raja bose trying to ask a question sir raja is from your media friend one of his media friends He was a resident editor of Times of India in Lucknow when I was in Lucknow. Raja, can you hear me? Ah, uh, yes, I can hear you, Pato. Yeah, you can ask. Uh, good morning to everyone. Ah, uh, good morning, sir. It's a pleasure. Ah, uh, uh, sir, two quick questions. Ah, uh, one is um, like Pato. I, as a journalist, have covered a number of elections. Ah, uh, in '96, I remember I was in. I was with a newspaper in Calcutta. and the uh, lok sabha and calcutta assembly uh, bengal assembly elections were happening together and i was trailing siddharth shankar ray who was fighting from badman so he was a bit worried and uh, so i tried to find out why and he said just go to the booths ask people and they will tell you why i am worried so one of the guys who told me is that the cpm goons they make hole in the wall of the booths uh, and they look and they keep an eye on who we are voting for in those days there used to be that thappa used to put on the paper they said they get to know and they tell us that we'll chop chop off your uh, your finger so it was a big terror i mean today uh, after so many years a lot of things have happened but it was a very 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 true fear back then so what has changed sir is it uh, breaking up the polls into uh, into phases so that no more forces are applied or what made it happen my yeah. question number 2 uh, my question number 2 very quickly uh, a very young girl uh, who cast her first vote in her life in 2019 told me that she pressed the nota button and she said lot of her friends did so so how big is nota now how important is it now and are politicians afraid of it thank you yes so you raised two issues one number one is about the muscle power uh, yeah. it's a fact that there was a time when muscle power was uh, very very uh, rampant and uh, not in the first 5 7 years because then uh, normally what happens is when a country becomes independent the party which brings independence uh, has a smooth sa- uh, sailing for two three elections so after that the opposition uh, starts uh, becoming uh, powerful and that is when uh, it becomes competitive when the problems begin so initially the the, the candidates used to uh, get the help of uh, the muscle men and the money men to help them in the election after some time these two categories realize that if these guys are winning because of our muscle power why don't i contest election myself but if they are winning because of my money why don't i fight election myself and become respectable so that is when these two problems began but um, uh, over a period of time uh, particularly after mr t and session muscle power has uh, completely the crushed has been crushed 
uh, the deployment of uh, paramilitary for so called paramilitary forces uh, has been a, a great factor doing it in uh, multiple phases has been a factor and total tied uh, vigil by the election commission uh, now for instance we send our uh, the last election about 75000 plus video camera teams were, were chasing all the candidates so we can't if, if somebody they has a criminal record we can't stop him from contesting because that's a question of law but we can keep an eye on him so the camera is chasing him all the time recording his activity he is looking over his shoulder to see well, whether he, he is free to harass somebody he cannot so he gives up so our uh, vigil of this kind uh, uh, around the clock uh, helped so to muscle power is now history i'm sure uh, everybody will agree uh, for instance i remember 2011 election in calcutta where 100 200 uh, poll day murders uh, were common and 1200 11 to 1200 in a year was the uh, the tally which we had uh, collected for 3 years but not a drop of blood uh, because of uh, you know the, that was the time when tamil nadu and west bengal were going to the poll at the same time they are similar size but tamil nadu had no problem of the kind in bengal so it was a one day poll west bengal had, didn't have the money it only had muscle men so seven day seven phase poll to make sure that paramilitary forces are deployed at every sensitive booth and as a result we were able to uh, uh, conduct very peaceful and rhetoric election uh, so this is one now the second question about nota nota the only is an expression of public opinion of disapproval of the kind of candidate it doesn't create the right to reject even if 51% people have voted for nota it has no effect because these votes are counted as blank votes nil vote invalid okay. votes the so only to the register a kind of a public expression of disapproval on the kind of candidate so but the benefit of nota is that if this young girl had not gone to the polling station probably somebody else who could have impersonated True. could have impersonated True. although that also has been made almost impossible now because your picture is there on the electoral roll in front of everybody who is sitting in the polling station you cannot uh, pretend to be somebody else uh, because the, your photograph is, is there so things have improved a lot except for the two which i the to money power and uh, only that i think that is the only remaining problem and hopefully some day it will be solved one additional problem which has been created is by social media but maybe we'll come to that later thank you very much sir so uh, i now turn to your second book which came out in 2019 on the elections uh, the great march of democracy seven decades of india's elections i had the pleasure of reading this book also it is a book with a different uh, nature because although it deals with elections it is actually a collection of essays written by different people on indian elections people who are experts in their own fields very diverse backgrounds and have they have written on indian elections from their own perspectives for example people like mark tally christopher zafarlot meghna desai yogendra yadav mr ratan tata people from very very different diverse fields they have written about indian elections and gives a very you know uh, kaleidoscopic view of indian election in many ways which is different from a election commissioner himself writing about elections so the, my question is that what prompted you to do that and what was the process like how did you approach these people to write on indian election what was the process of this book yeah it's a very interesting question you know in uh, 2010 and 11 we were celebrating the diamond jubilee of election commission of india so um, yeah, i thought that uh, this is a good occasion to come out with a commemorative volume uh, with a collection of uh, essays from uh, different people around the world uh, which is why we chose you know for instance people are surprised how what is ratan tata do, doing here or ila bhat or nana lal kidwai so you know it was a cross section because after all in a democracy the business flourishes when there is a peace in democracy uh, the empowerment of women was a major issue so we the, got in touch with the, uh, lots of people and the original proposal was that uh, lord meghna desai 
uh, and uh, Mukulika Banerjee of London School of Economics and I will edit uh, this volume, a collection of essays. We they wrote over 30 people and uh, we received 13 articles. Um, uh, but uh, and we were in uh, negotiation with the publisher uh, who was a bit too greedy and you know he wanted to uh, uh, was asking how many buy back how many books will you buy uh, 500 1000 um, so and uh, kept on dragging uh, their feet uh, those people uh, and by, by then i finished my term so some of these ideas which are personalized you know also uh, go away with you so uh, my uh, successors uh, didn't find the idea very interesting or uh, uh, did not follow it up and the pro uh, the, uh, the project died but fortunately i had a, a hard copy of all these articles with a very orange color title now orange color title ensured that whenever i was cleaning up my uh, study around me here right here right uh, behind me that uh, uh, booklet uh, uh, printed uh, uh, a copy of all the articles that it was reminding me of, uh, of this. So I discussed it with the, the commissioning editor of the Penguin and uh, she liked it very much, uh, Swati Chopra. She loved it and she said it's a brilliant idea and uh, please go ahead and of course you may like to update it. So we needed to do two things. One that the, send the article back to those people who had sent it eight, nine years ago to update. And secondly, 13 articles was, uh, perhaps was not enough uh, for a book. So I wrote to 17 people. Uh, we uh, thought about it and we made a letter of 17 people. I approached 17 and all 17 responded. 15 of them sent their articles. Two uh, had genuine reasons to apologize. So my strike rate, my success rate was 100% as a former CEC. And it was only 40% as the CEC when we were celebrating the Diamond Jubilee. So I take it as a personal uh, compliment uh, and a mark of credibility. So uh, we uh, received all these articles in a record time. And uh, uh, Penguin gave me a very good royalty also. The, here was the, another publisher demanding my money and uh, 1,000, you know, in lakhs of rupees. Here I got a royalty. So, because this is what the, the, the book deserved. So, uh, all these articles are together. Um, for instance, I, uh, Mr. Sobna Chatterjee. There is an article uh, by the um, uh, Mr. T. N. Session. And there is a chapter on, on Mr. T. N. Session by Professor Christophe Jaffarlo, a French professor. So, this, it has very interesting uh, things in this book. And uh, it has been very successful. So to me, the most interesting, as a lay reader, the most interesting article was on the uh, article which dealt with how the election, the uh, Constituent Assembly Secretariat at that time, CAS, yes. dealt with the issue of voters' registration of post-partition refugees Yes, for the first general elections. It was yes. such a pragmatic and humane approach to the whole problem. Yes. So, and the second one was probably the first and only election held in Hyderabad state. Hmm. So these articles, I'm just trying to bring the flavor of the book uh, to the audience because there are certain things which we take for granted. And I wish sir, sometimes that Dr. Sukumar Sain, our first chief election commissioner, had written the book on the first and the second general elections. Yes, <laughs> that would have been a really history of Indian elections when he was struggling with everything, post-partition refugees and, you know, st structures had not been set up to mm. that time to conduct elections would have been an extraordinary feat. So I would like you to recount one of the interesting anecdotes that there is in this book, the second book. Yeah, yeah the, the part that you have uh, the mentioned uh, two uh, very good things from the book. Uh, and uh, I would like to mention uh, there's a, um, the first electoral roll, and uh, which also is a testimony of the, the brilliance of our bureaucracy. Uh, not pe many people uh, knew. In fact, uh, for a long time, even I did not know till this lady, the Israeli professor, 
young lady uh, uh, she used to meet me in conferences worldwide here and there ornit shani so she worked in the election commission where i used to sit on the second floor or the fourth floor and she the work in the in the basement in our record room and archives and dug out material about which we were not even aware now what is that that we did not know that even before the election commission was born our first electoral roll was ready you know it was the bureaucracy the central the, the constituent assembly secretariat uh, they, they imagine that since we will be going in for democracy we will have election the electoral roll is the first requirement for the from 1947 itself they started working on preparing the electoral roll and in fact that is what ornit shani has pointed out that uh, indians became voters before they became citizens so that's a very interesting thing which is highlighted uh, coincidentally i finished an article for the wire only last night on the first election and its significance so now bn rao was the, the secretary of the that secretariat he was actually the advisor and uh, to the constituent assembly secretariat and it was his wisdom and his colleagues who uh, came uh, prepared the, the first electoral roll and when mr sukumar sent to go over his task was made easier because the roll was handed over because he had uh, still huge logistical problems from scratch you know there was no staff there was no office there was no machinery no experience no institutional memory of course in 1944 there was some assembly election but many people who had worked on that election with the experience either migrated or they were killed uh, during the riot uh, among the 1 million who were killed so uh, in such a situation to create the infrastructure from scratch was a great achievement and if you uh, Uh, Mr. Sukumar Sen had done it in today's time uh, with the media explosion. He would have been uh, God to many people. I have come to the conclusion, you know, in that article, that uh, almost eighty percent of the systems which he put in place, uh, Mr. Sukumar Sen, are still in operation. Of course, we have moved uh, to EVM. Uh, that is uh, the part of the twenty percent uh, innovation and changes. but basic structure uh, basic system remains the same and uh, that way mr sukumar sen is the unsung hero of india democracy incidentally i have dedicated this book uh, uh, to not to one per, but three persons and uh, let me read out to you to the founding fathers of the constitution who laid the foundation of the most trusted institution of the republic of india number 2 to, to sukumar sen i see the first chief election commissioner of india who set up the process and structures for conducting the largest electoral exercise on the planet then then to mr t n session who took the commission to new heights of authority credibility and visibility uh, uh, absolutely for as a serving bureaucrat even to imagine what <coughs> sukumar sen would have been doing in those days with a with the problems of setting up an office with manual typewriters in those days and to you know to set get the process rolling with no past experience would have been a tremendous exercise and which has which as a nation i think we have not celebrated much we have not understood the importance of that exercise that happened in the early 50s when dr mr sukumar sen must have been conducting those elections so uh, we have seen so many electoral reforms happening in the last 20 years or so or maybe 30 years or so epic the the photo voter cards evm machines themselves the use of technology and the use of cpmfs the observers this has all come in the last 30 years but still we find that there are concerns there are concerns about the fairness of the elections there are concerns about the use of money the concern about behavior of media especially paid news and the limitations that we have had in tackling these issues because of limitations of law but also because of limitations of other things i would like you to share your views about the emerging concerns for uh conducting a free and fair elections so many people have joined sir and probably they would also understand that there are certain concerns despite our i would say heroic performance in conducting so many successful elections year after year 
uh, in india's largest democracy you know the uh, the biggest problem uh, i think is this uh, social media and uh, the fact that the election commission uh, conducts polls in multiple phases now uh, the whole idea of multiple phases was the uh, security of uh, voters and security of polling staff uh, as you mentioned uh, the muscle power uh, ruled supreme uh, once upon a time so <coughs> every political party after which the session when he started deploying uh central paramilitary force uh, that is uh, not the right term to use central armed police force uh was, was deployed he, he asked for just one company of 100 people and it was denied to him now uh, of course uh, uh, whatever election commission wants uh, we negotiate with the home ministry of course how many companies can be given so the, in my time about uh, 700 750 companies were given and then we see how many has sensitive and hyper sensitive boosts that we have and since the political party is every political party demand that we bring say capf from delhi so uh, we have to see how many uh, force uh, do we uh, how much force do we require and then we uh, rotate the same force from face to face so that uh, every sensitive booth or hyper sensitive booth is taken care of now interestingly uh, personally you know when i joined the election commission and i was doing a sort analysis and one of the weaknesses that we uh, identified was our dependence on paramilitary forces it it is uh, almost a shame that we have to depend on them why can uh, the local police handle it and interestingly the low, the lack of trust in the local police is something which the police officers should introspect about and uh, uh, when i was conducting the my first uh, election in cec in bihar the then chief minister chief minister mr nitish kumar demanded that instead of seven phases uh, even if you have to do 10 phases please bring capf now here is a chief minister who did not trust his own police now what what can be a sh- more shocking statement on the faith the people have on the local police and the, who what has led to this lack of faith the politicians handling the uh, the uh, police officers and is officers for that matter you know at the drop of a hat they transfer them you know many officers live out of suitcases three months four months is their average tenure so they break the backbone of uh, the the force which is why they are not trusted they were, and um, how long can we depend on uh, paramilitary now secondly since these forces are limited um, uh, and we have to have multiple phases now multiple phases have become very problematic in this age of uh, electronic media explosion particularly social media now the logic was that uh, from, from one phase to the other it will take four five days uh, for our force to move and go and uh, establish authority and then uh, uh, make all the arrangement but the gundas travel much faster so if our forces are moving from phase to phase the gundas are moving phase to phase even quicker and faster so uh, i think this multiple phase has to go as soon as possible and the solution is simple that the uh, home ministry instead of giving us a thousand companies and i believe uh, in the last election they had gone up to 2100 now to 2000 companies if they can give 3000 35500 companies instead of 1000 uh, companies for 3 months let them give 3000 companies for 1 month or 10 20 days and we will finish the election very quickly now uh, uh, one problem which we are facing and uh, i was asked by media person only yesterday that the, you know some leaders are uh, uh, making their speeches just a day before the poll when there is silence period now but they, they are the benefiting from a technicality that they are speaking outside the silent uh, zone uh, in a neighboring district now the radio tv signal cannot be blocked so speech is being made in delhi and but we being heard in merit and uh, saranpur or everywhere so what do you do about it i have suggested that the, this should be abolished you know this uh, silence period uh, ban should be abolished because uh, you know if you are addressing electronically 
because it's impossible to manage. Uh, then the, the reflection will come on election commission. Oh, it's very uh, weak, very uh, ineffective. It has not been able to ban. It is not able to stop this. So I think the solution is, is uh, uh, abolish it altogether. Let there be full, full free campaigning. Except the public meeting, the local nuisance, that should be stopped. Print and electronic media campaign should continue. And since it is open to, will be open to everybody, that will ensure level playing field. So, uh, um, the level playing field of print and media is possible only when the print and media itself is fair and equally disposed to everybody else. Uh, that, unfortunately, is not the situation, sir. But I would not like to take this issue further because we can go further discussion this and there should be other people. I can see Mr. Reddy uh, from Kuala Lumpur. He is India, India's High Commissioner in uh, Malaysia, sir. He wants to probably ask a question. Uh, Mr. Reddy, are you there? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. First of all, thank you, Partha, for uh, uh, giving this opportunity for joining this uh, very, very enlightening discussion. Uh, sir, I have... Uh, uh, I want to give a uh, couple of pointers from Malaysia. Uh, these have been appointed as I commissioner for the last four months. And I've, uh, this is about democracy in Malaysia and how uh, the process of elections and democracy uh, that we have in India uh, to be, uh, in some sense, uh, some to be that Malaysians would want to learn. This has come to know my knowledge in the recent months when I was talking to some of their uh, senior colleagues in the government particularly from their parliamentarians and others. Uh, one issue, sir, which is uh, uh, still bothering them uh, is about anti-defection, sir. Uh, in India, as we have this anti-defection law, which has come into place in 1985, and thereby there has been a certain order in terms of uh, elections, prior to elections, during elections, post-elections, how parliamentarians would behave. Uh, I think it seemed to have some, model, some modulation in, the, in, their, in their behavior in terms of their original loyalties to the party from where they got elected. In Malaysia, they do not have, sir. At this point in time, there is no anti-defection law. Second is, uh, at present, uh, they are really going through coalition politics of our, our era of 19, late, late 90s, of our late 90s. Uh, so, uh, two, point, two just points, sir, I would like to seek your guidance in terms of how, one, of course, I'm going to have your book here right away uh, and we'll get some copies and uh, distribute them among, among the some of the influential people who uh, uh, talk about uh, this transition that they want to make in Malaysia. Second is, of course, uh, uh, would there be any other uh, material that you would recommend which I can perhaps take it, take it up in the, uh, or share it with the people here? Uh, and the third is, of course, uh, uh, soon I'm going to write to you, request you uh, for a session with some of the uh, interested uh, senators and parliament parliamentarians in Malaysia, and uh, that includes both uh, both in the ruling party as well as in the opposition, uh, who would like to hear the Indian experience on how uh, anti-defection, because they rec recently they were, they were attempting to put a, uh, bring in a bill in the, uh, their uh, parliament, and this mm -hmm. conversation uh, would be useful uh, from Malaysia's perspective, at which time, sir, uh, we would certainly draw on your, uh, your uh, sort of um, guidance or your, let's just use the word, your, your uh, suggestions to them. Mm. Uh, which I'm sure uh, would uh, form an important part of the conversation. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Reddy. Before I answer your question on anti-defection uh, law and, or lack of it in uh, Malaysia, I would like to uh, repeat an anecdote. When I was an election observer in 2015 in Sri Lanka, and uh, uh, along with two or three others, we were sitting in the CEC's room, and unlike India, the uh, uh, chief election commissioner announces the results uh, in the presence of the candidate. So the presidential candidate, the prime minister candidate, they were all sitting in the adjoining hall. And in his speech, the CEC, the Mahinda Dasapaksha, uh, he the, was holding this book in his hand. And he says, okay, okay, this is Dr. S. Y. Kureshi's book who's sitting in the next room. And I would like to read the first three lines which were from the foreword by Mr. Gopal Gandhi, that India has uh, three great things, uh, the Taj Mahal, uh, the Mahatma Gandhi, and uh, India's election. 
and then yeah. he addressed the incoming president and the prime minister sir my request is please give me the powers which india's election commission has so uh, yeah. i was very tight uh, with that and you know this is the importance of india's uh, electoral system we were regarded worldwide as a uh, something to be proud of secondly the in this book uh, uh, this is the fifth edition uh, the uh, present edition and you will find in the uh, comment in the book three prime ministers of different countries for, for former prime minister of belgium of the bahama and uh, yeah the republic of mali so three for former prime minister commenting on the book so it has uh, received worldwide acclaim and when you say that they would you would like to give it to your politicians uh, in uh, malaysia actually you will be doing a favor to them because this yeah. has so much of information it is a text when i was writing this book i was uh, not sure of my target audience was the it is for the people of india or journalists and professors or international so it turned out that it actually addresses every audience conversational tone journalistic style yet it is a handbook of election of, a, of any election with lessons for the world so i think this is a good thing and uh, ask your xp division they will send you copies there have been many missions they have been ordering i remember in london uh, high commissioner had taken 50 copies and i personally launched the, there and many lords and baronesses who came and when i gave them the lecture and told them the, the size you know the the, the british uh, people who were there They they came down a uh, peg or two when they they realized that you were talking to India with ninety countries, uh, sir, and they they came to me and said, "Okay, sir, you are going to do our Sina Chola so, mm. Kadya." So because that is the kind of pride uh, which it does create. So now anti-defection law actually in India also is yet not a uh, complete story because uh, there is still dissatisfaction and defection is still keeps on happening. um uh, if a majority has to be uh, converted into a minority by 10 mlas give them 100 crores that is the figure we heard in karnataka last time now 100 crores for uh, defecting uh, the, the, the government falls and then the, after 3 months there are election they they have to resign from the party and recontest so fine they will recontest they spend a crore or two and come back and become minister so i have been suggesting that uh, this needs to be tightened that the person who defects uh, like this should be debarred from contesting for 6 years so that at least one election he misses and uh, yes, and if he cannot contest he will not become a minister this is the least we need to do so uh, our uh, although we had taken a step uh, initially the, the, if there are one third of the mla is uh, leaving Uh, and merging with somebody else that was legitimate but that was very easy out of 9 mlas 3 go away uh, so later on it was made uh, uh, the 3 fourths of the mlas uh, 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 could defect that also is possible 3 fourths of 5 mlas is four very easy the in fact the entire government can, can migrate i remember in haryana when uh, indira gandhi came to power in 1980 the entire cabinet of bhajan lal entire cabinet migrated very coolly <laughs> so we need to find a full proof answer at the moment it is awaiting us samina you want to uh, invite somebody else to ask question yeah uh, there are some more questions people have shared questions with me so i can read them out uh and uh, name give, you know provide the names very nice question from uh, mr sanjay kumar um he asks this question uh, sir does opinion poll shown on television after the implementation of model code of conduct influence the voters if yes should it not be uh, banned upon announcement of model code of conduct till last phase of election yeah good very good question in fact I, only 3 days ago i wrote an article in the indian express on this i am uh, like most political parties except the bjp every political party has been opposing it and uh, election commission also opposes it although uh, opinion poll if done honestly may be a good thing because the research is always a, a good idea but the fact that we have the reality of uh, uh, paid news in india 
you can pay for an editorial to be written in your favor you can pay for a headline to be written in your in your favor when uh, newspapers are uh, selling there is space like this so and in fact there was a, a sting operation by a news channel in 2015 uh, and i saw it for 5 hours glued to the tv and 11 top channels of the country poll polling agencies were confessing how uh, you know to get their clients uh, to hook the client the how they manipulate the data and how will they, they will show them winning so um, uh, in such a situation it should be banned so um, uh, in fact all mps uh, in, i remember in our time in 2008 all political parties came to us demanding a ban and we said we agree with you but it is in your hand you have to pass it in parliament in uh, and then they, they drafted the amendment to representation of people act we vetted that amendment but a week later we uh, what we see is only exit poll is banned opinion poll was not banned and they say uh, a week later these same guys came to us crying he said look why are you crying and why are you complaining to us you had said you wanted it banned why didn't you do it in parliament you missed the opportunity you missed the bus so since uh, the, the reliability of the the um, is doubtful and now the question is whether it influences now any misinformation is a corrupt practice yeah you know there is a bandwagon effect hawa banti hai hawa ye ban gayi ke qureshi is winning to those who are not planning to vote for me even if one vote gets shifted to me because of the false hawa it's a vitiation of the poll process it is corrupting the election it's a corrupt practice in the ipc in a corrupt practice under the representation of people act therefore then i remember there was this debate you know it doesn't make a significant difference pray what is a significant difference even one man who is switching because of the bandwagon effect is a significant difference it is a vitiation of the process because uh, on the basis of disinformation i am changing my loyalty the, from uh, x to y so uh, this therefore had to go or at least what i have recommended is yeah, ideally to to the banning there should be self regulation and independent regulation and britain already has a great model europe has a great model so and after 2015 bihar election six uh, the companies had decided that they will come up with uh, the similar uh, indian poll poll council so that is waiting after six years uh, that should be taken forward um thank you very much sir so in fact now we have uh, ms somya pande uh, cdo kanpur deha she is uh, running her first election i mean man- managing her first election and she wants to ask a question so uh, uh, very good afternoon sir uh, uh, to both kureshi sir and partha sir it is a real uh, privilege to be hearing uh, such uh, great words of wisdom sir sir i am somya pande 2017 batch ias officer posted in the up cadre and i am getting the opportunity to conduct my first ever elections next sunday sir we are going on poll on 28th february in kanpur dehat in the third phase so sir this is a very aptly timed uh, session by partha sir uh, for young officers like us i ordered also ordered this book sir recently after uh, seeing partha sir's fb post and i am Yes sir this is on the way sir this will be delivered tomorrow by amazon this is your textbook for the election this yes sir yes sir yes sir uh, so sir i have two questions uh, uh, i am doing the karmic part sir as oc uh, personnel and training uh, as cdo so one question was how can we think of rationalizing the polling material for our poll parties so what i am seeing sir i read the ro handbook and the presiding officer handbook and i found that a lot of things are uh, repetitive like the the presiding officer has to col- uh, collect 39 types of items on the day of dispatch and there are a lot of things that he has to Well, apart from the PO diary, so can we think on the lines of rationalizing the poll material, eliminating the repetitive parts, sir, and making it simple yet effective for our polling parties, sir? And second, sir, was regarding sweep. 
because sir you've written so extensively and you've given us so in, uh, valuable in, uh, inputs on sweep and how sweep can help in increasing water participation what i uh, believe sir as a field level officer that uh, mostly sir we are focused on just activities like conducting the electoral literacy clubs or conducting prabhat ferries or rallies etc but sir that has very sometimes less tangible impact in terms of increasing our water participation sir and despite our best efforts we are not able to increase water participation in so called urban and educated class sir so what uh, can be the reasons and solutions for that sir thank mm. you sir. no i'll take the second thing first that in this book my article my essay is on sweep only and where i have tried to document how we did it and with the idea that others could pick it up pato uh, had mentioned umesh sina umesh sina was ceo of up he did a great job in water education and uh, later on in election commission also, also he carried forward this mission and he has been uh, fantastic and i have mentioned him repeatedly in my book there are many things many ideas and thoughts he contributed including on the national voters day he suggested sir why don't you uh, uh, why don't we ask the young people to take a pledge that we will vote and vote honestly now that was an interesting thing then i asked him to draft that pledge which he sent and this uh, national practice now on the national voters day every you know crores of people who are given their voter card for the first time they uh, take a reply they take an oath that they will vote uh, without fail and we will vote honestly now the other thing which you mentioned about simplification is a very good idea and but all these bright ideas uh, actually have been coming from the field only now so you suggest what simplification is required and right to the election commission election commission is extremely open to these ideas and in uh, in fact we instituted national awards for innovation innovation and excellence so exactly to promote these activities for instance one uh, yeah, young collector of uh, your age in uh, arunachal pradesh in my time she uh, that there was uh, it was so difficult to reach the polling booth it right? used to take 3 days to reach the booth suppose the booth is captured we will get to know after 3 4 days so she said sir i in five uh, difficult booths i have installed Uh, a, a laptop with a, uh, what is it called? A, a live telecast, a live webcast, live webcast, and you can see. I, the, in sitting in Delhi, I saw in one polling station a constable in uniform entered the polling booth. Now it is uh, not uh, allowed, so we uh, it was a serious offence. We immediately called up the collector and found out he had gone in uh, stupidly, not. Uh, with the intention of mischief but the fact that uh, this innovation of live webcast was so handy we made it a national practice now all over the country in difficult booths we do this live live webcast i suggest that you the write a paper on simplification for for which not only you will be doing great national service because if it is adopted you will even be eligible for an award every year on uh, national voters day this award is given Savina, uh, you Thank want you, to uh, invite somebody else? Or? Yes, yes. We have we have so many questions. So we have taken questions from uh, officers. So I would like to take one question from uh, people uh, from civil society. So a lot of people are working in civil society and uh, working with the population. Uh, they also have certain questions. Uh, Shipra wants to ask a question. Shipra, hello, sir. Uh, you- Thank you for this opportunity, uh, Patha sir and Samina ma'am. Uh, so my question is that has the time. For, uh, Thing, thing in Indian election right now. Yeah, Shipra, your voice cracked. So basically, she is asking, has the time come for public financing in yeah. elections? And yeah, in fact, we good. have a very similar question from Mr. Suhail Khan as well. What is your take or opinion on election fundraising through online crowdfunding channel? So yeah. I promoted. Will this help bring transparency in the election funding process? Both are connected. So I thought I'll. Yeah. No, together. no. It's a very, very good question. Then um, uh, I have been advocating for the for the last many years. Uh, public funding of uh, not the election but of political parties because funding of election will not uh, help because uh, uh, 70 lakhs is allowed for a parliament seat and now increase a little even if you give them a check of 70 lakhs what about 2 3 crores or 5 crores which they are spending illegally the black money so uh, our money will only the uh, supplement their black money instead of that i have suggested that for every vote a political party or even a candidate gets 
let uh, let us uh, give him 100 rupees and uh, suppose 60 crore people voted so 6000 crores is what we give them will that be enough my answer is yes because all political parties together the when they declare their uh, collection of 5 years it come to 4500 or 5000 crores here we are giving them 6000 crores by check with dignity they don't have to beg borrow and steal and twist the arm of people and uh, resort to corruption with dignity we give them money but then there will be no private fund collection no corporate funding because then uh, there will be crony capitalism so uh, this is uh, the, the recommendation now second uh, about crowd sourcing it's a good, very good idea and uh, actually aam aadmi party in in, in its early years tried it they did a very good job because uh, uh, through crowd funding and then everything every rupee which they collected and every rupee that they spent was in the public domain it was in uh, uh, on their website and i was i have mentioned it in my book actually uh, election book uh, i have mentioned it as a great model and in fact in one of the board meetings of international idea in stockholm when i mentioned they were very impressed and they invited uh, raghav chadda to the, some international conferences now later on in one of my tweets somebody said ke sir aap bahut tareef karte hain ye but it has been removed from their website so i called up uh, arvind kejriwal and i said ke arvind hum to tumhari itni tareef karte hain par tumhare wo sare account jo ek ek paisa tha wo hata diya gaya kehenge sir each of my donors has been raided now what do you do a great model which was evolving has been killed for pure purely for political reason so we need to think about it and uh, but the idea is good crowd sourcing is a brilliant idea and public are willing to donate for uh, good activities and good causes liberally thank you very much sir um i think i'll take the last question from uh, dipanjan banerji uh, he asked what initiative and progress have been made so far by election commission of india to kick start a process of fully secured online voting system for indian citizens by which uh, can we expect such a system to come alive so no, the we are not looking at the online voting uh, at the moment but some day it may happen for uh, just remember that even the very simple evm which is a stand alone machine like a 17th century primitive calculator and adding machine you press a button and vote is added it is as simple as that it doesn't communicate with the world outside it cannot uh, receive instructions from anywhere even that is questioned 40 years after its introduction till today it keeps going to to the supreme court in such a situation uh, internet voting getting acceptance is impossible now election commission at the moment is opposed to it uh, for two non technical reasons for although technically we are an it superpower it's a child's play for us to introduce it tomorrow but we are not looking at it for two reasons which are non technical one we cannot protect you at home because somebody comes with a gun to give me your computer and i will vote myself we cannot protect you at home or somebody comes with a packet of 5000 rupees here is the money give me your computer i'll do the voting myself we cannot guard against that for these two reasons uh, for the moment it is not possible not feasible and the fact that the globally it is uh, even evm is not being used in majority of countries which is something which is uh, uh, told to us all the time so time hasn't come for uh, such a full proof you know the bank maybe some people say you know atm uses uh, internet well bank can be looted uh, insurance company will underwrite it but election cannot be looted cannot be allowed to be looted therefore uh, in, uh, in the foreseeable future i don't see that happening so this is exactly the question that was asked by one of our three mohit uh, why online voting cannot take place and why people cannot you know through otp vote and i said almost exactly the same lines but i quoted uh, a, uh, a statement which was hindustan ek sath kai sadiyon mein jeeta hai oh. so uh, people living in uh, sometimes new delhi cannot understand 
the complexity and diversity of India. But we all come out with our own limitations. Uh, so uh, I must respect your timing. We are in the final stretch. Before I hand over to you for your final comment, sir, it has been a real pleasure uh, interacting with you and reading your two books. Uh, there are certain our topic has of this conversation was deliberately kept from elections to democracy because we believe that elections is not the final thing about democracy. We are managing our elections very, very well. No doubt about that. But democracy has to be more than elections. And there, I think we have a lot, many miles to traverse. Uh, we can be legitimately proud of being a democracy which got its independence in 1947 and sustained it when all many countries have succumbed to repeated periods of dictatorship. But also it is a fact that in terms of paid news, in terms of money in elections, in terms of even simple as how the chief election commissioners and election commissioners are appointed, for example, there are way, reforms which are still asking to be implemented. And I leave these questions in the minds of the audience also to ponder over but, uh, in which direction we should move ahead. I thank you, sir, uh, with the bottom of my heart for joining us, joining us in this conversation. And I thank all of my friends who have joined today. And I now hand over you for, sir, the final comments on this episode and whatever you want to maybe a wanting to address. Yeah, yeah thank you, uh, Partha. It was an uh, excellent interaction. I enjoyed a very brilliant question, very lovely audience. Thank you very much for uh, introducing me to them. Uh, the, you know, coming back to the first thing, uh, the, you know, the topic, uh, election to democracy. So you brought out a very interesting uh, facet of uh, this subject. Uh, a good election is no guarantee of good democracy. And the fact that, you know, global state of democracy, there are 12 or uh, 13 global indexes of democracy by different organizations, but we use mostly the economist and now international ideas global state of democracy, GSOD. And in fact, the latest report, if you Google, they gave me the honor of writing the foreword for this, uh, for this global report. Now, we, the, when I was writing my book, uh, full of pride, that is when I came across the term flawed democracy for India. I was offended. I felt hurt. Hey, you know, this must be a foreign conspiracy. You know, they may make parameters like this, that India will be shown in poor light. But when I studied why we have been categorized as a flawed democracy, I found exactly the same reason, the reforms which we are demanding. But now, for instance, women's participation is just 10%, why is not 50%? Uh, literacy is low, uh, corruption, um, all those issues about which we are concerned are, are bringing us down. So while we get 9.7 out of 10 for our election, we get five or six points for uh, other parameters. So we have to ensure that uh, that uh, we have good democracy besides good elections. So that uh, I'm glad that you know you perceive that that difference and you uh, made this your topic. I will now uh, suggest that you know my next book also. Whenever uh, you somebody drops out of uh, after committing. Uh, uh, to come on your show. Please uh, keep this in mind. I'll be very happy to talk about my next book, which is Population Myth, Islam, Family Planning and Politics. And it answers, uh, that may be your title because that is a catchy title. Are Muslims going to overtake the Hindu population? I have seen videos in the last three, four, day, four days that by 2029, a Muslim will be the Prime Minister of India. Because Muslims are becoming man majority in two, three years. And I got uh, uh, Professor Dinesh Singh, former Vice Chancellor of Delhi University, a mathematician, to do a mathematical model for me. And he had uh, disabused me of all my hopes. I was thinking I'll become powerful. I'll be the successor of Emperor Akbar. They said not for 1,000 years. Never. <laughs> Never. So you know, the fact that the propaganda is, is being spread on this disinformation, uh, and uh, polarization, this is a very uh, useful book for uh, you to read and uh, talk about. I'll be very happy to do another program on this book. Thank you very much. It was uh, a great pleasure talking to all of you. A brilliant audience. Amina, and I hand over you to you for the closing uh, of the session. Yep. 
um thank you very much sir thank you very much uh, kureshi sir thank you very much partha sir uh, for this uh, wonderful session and i would like to thank our third member mr mohit gupta and i would like to thank our audience who um, you know have been there throughout this session and asked such wonderful question that we could not even take all of them we'll probably uh, uh, send those questions offline to kureshi sir and these are the books that you must get an undocumented wonder and the great march to democracy uh, these two books are and the population myth so these three books are a must read i totally enjoyed reading these books so thank you very much sir for writing and enlightening us and also the new generation um, it was a wonderful conversation with you and thank you everyone uh, we would like to close the session now thank you thank you thank you so much